Hey what's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ines Alea and welcome to the CraterGalaxy.com space station. Here in space we are experimenting with intergalactic filmmaking skills and visual effects. If you're interested in our upcoming videos be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. Alright, so in today's video we're going to see how to key properly in Adobe After Effects and some extra tips and techniques to blend your footage better together. I'm not gonna show you how to do this in Premiere Pro because frankly just don't do it in Premiere Pro. The features aren't good enough to remove your green screen in a professional manner. I will show you a technique without a plugin, but I advise you if you do a lot of green screen effects, I would opt for the plugin as the render speed will actually be 10 times faster, but that's for later in this video and I'll have proof. So here I am in After Effects. As you can see, I have a 4K resolution clip at 24 FPS. The most important thing here is that the shot itself is already well lit and well prepared in order to be easily keyed out. So that's what we're gonna be seeing in today's video. If you have a hard key, it's gonna get hard to key out. So that's not the point of this video. Keying is actually super easy to do. It just gets hard when your scene is not well recorded. In today's video, I'm not going over how to fix those difficult shots, but rather on how to key a shot that is already well prepared. If you want to know how to set up your scene properly, you can go and check out my latest video on how to set up a green screen studio. In that video, I go over all the necessary things to achieve a good, clean green screen clip. Another important thing is the color depth. My footage here is ProRes 4 to 2, which means that I have a lot more color in the shot, so it will be a lot easier to key out. If you're doing this again, oftentimes I would highly encourage you to opt for 4 to 2 recording. Not every camera has that, but like the GH5 knows how to do that if you are recording with an external recorder like the Atomos Inferno. Anyways, I'll go over all the settings that you can play with. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I'm going to drag in my clip into a new composition and set my view to fit my screen. As you can see, the green screen still has some wrinkles and some lighting mistakes. This is due to our small space to record in, so it's hard to get rid of certain lighting problems or certain things. So the first thing that you should do is scan the clip to see what animation is happening, what is the movement of your actor. Then try to mask around the character roughly, but make sure that all the gestures during the entire video are still in the shot and not masked out. I do this especially for the wrinkles and the lighting on the top left, so really try to mask out all the bad parts of your green screen. Next, I'm going to apply my keying effect, so go to Effect Keying and choose for Key Light 1.2. Select a color that seems like a mid-range color of green of the entire screen that you see, and usually the best key is next to your actor itself, somewhere really close to him, because that's the green that is most important to get rid of. Already we have a decent key, this is what you want. If you see that now you have a lot of mistakes, it's probably best to reshoot your entire scene instead of trying to fix it in post, as it's always going to be visible. Next, I'm going to import the background that I want to use. Go back to your key light effect and change your view to view the screen matte. This will give you a clear overview of the keyed area. You'll see that everything black is keyed out and everything that is white is still going to be visible. But in some areas you'll see that you have some gray spots. That means that you have to clean this up. We can do this by going to the screen matte tab and try to gently increase the clip black until you don't have any errors in the blacks anymore. Then gently decrease the clip white until you don't see any errors in the white areas anymore. And that should give you a pretty clean image already. If you want to slow down your dragging speed, you can hold control while dragging to the left or to the right. Next, scrub the entire scene to see if the mat is good at all times, because sometimes it might introduce some of these gray spots again. If not correct where needed and play a little bit more with the clip black and clip white. I'm also going to set a subtle screen pre-blur. This is to get a little bit of a softer key and it will reduce the noise so the key light can actually better understand the colors. Next you can look at the edges and try to eliminate a little bit by decreasing the screen shrink slash grow. Make sure you don't go for too high values, just keep it very subtle. Also some screen softness to blend the edges a little bit nicer in the background and that's basically it for key light. I don't tend to use the other tabs so I'm not going to go over those as you don't really need them. One thing that I don't like about key light is when you choose the final result it tends to add a lot of noise in the image. A solution that I found is to set the intermediate result and add an advanced spill suppression effect 
to it and that should solve the noise issue and also get rid of all the spill. Okay, so my footage was recorded and lit to be in this room, so I don't need to do any color correction here, but if you need to, try to match the background color to the foreground color as good as possible. Next, I'll add an adjustment layer with a final kind of grade applied to it. Adding a LUT on top of both the foreground and background makes them blend well together. Anyway, you have plenty of other compositing options, but these are very hard to do without a plugin. So for the next part of the tutorial, I'm just going to start over with a new plugin, which is actually from Red Giant. They just released their VFX suite. So let me go over that. The VFX suite has its own keying plugin called Primate Keyer. I don't know if you have keyed often before, but Primate Keyer is basically much faster than Keylight for rendering. Keylight can really take a very long time to render. I actually made a comparison of the exact same shot. One is keyed with Keylight and one is keyed with Primate, and I rendered both with Media Encoder. I opened the lock from Media Encoder and I was shocked. I looked at the time difference and it was like 10 times faster. Literally 3 hours or 17 minutes. It's crazy. So for my videos I really need that kind of plugin. It's also a bit easier to use, but both require some knowledge. It's just a little bit more intuitive. You have a different way to select your background where in Keylight you can only select one pixel. You can drag or select an area with a rectangle tool to sample your green screen color. It just makes it a little bit more convenient. So I'll select my background using the first tool here. And you will see that I get very transparent, so I'll have to fix that. Change the view again to matte, and now with the second tool we can adjust the green that has to be removed. So select with this tool the background until it's completely gone, and now select with the third tool the parts on myself to add white back in again. Try to do this until you have an as clean as possible image. It might be that you see some minor artifacts in the center of your character. If you have this, you can either try to select them with this tool so it removes those spots or you can just go to the core mat and check this. This will use the edges of the mask and fill the entire keying area so I'm completely white. Once you are done, again verify if I am keyed out properly on every frame, so just play it back and control, then go and change back to the calm view. Now all you will see is some green spill, especially at my hair. To remove that, we'll use the spill suppressor and just enable it. You should also add some screen shrink and screen blur. Just play a little bit with those settings and voila, we have our key. Now let's integrate our background a little bit better using the new plugin called Supercomp. A really, really powerful plugin for compositing within After Effects and it just opens an entire new window to work with, which is awesome. So select both of your layers and choose a plugin. Super Comp, this will make a new layer on the top and open an entire new panel like this one. Then when we go to the plus icon for the background, for example, I get tons of awesome effects that I can add. Like I will add an optical flow, for example, in the background. And if I increase the value, you actually see that the foreground also gets like a wrap of glow around myself, which is super nice. So I'm going to delete this glow, I don't need it, but I just wanted to show you as a demonstration. Now I'm going to add a haze on the foreground element and that will actually add a little bit of haze using the background color. That way it blends in a little bit better. I'm going to lower my value to keep it rather subtle though. I'm going to add a light wrap as well. This will add like a nice little light wrap around me using the background color again as a light source so I immerse a little bit better in the scene. And finally you can also add an edge blend which will soften the edges a little bit just to make me look a little bit more integrated. Alright, so that's basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel for more and definitely hit the notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. Also check out our website. We have a bunch of awesome things to offer for any kind of digital creative. And if you buy something from our website, it helps to support this channel. Hope to see you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.